as well. And Inoue said, I, I got caught with the left hook, and that's what woke me up. But Inoue's power proved to be too much. Yep, you know what time it is, man. It's, of course, your favorite channel, man, CTB. It's Chan Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. So what up to him, man? What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Most definitely. You are tuning in to our Raw Review, man. This is our Raw Review of a fight that came out earlier this morning, man. I ain't gonna lie. I was not down in my bed when the fight was live, but I did watch the playback. Uh, Monster Inouye versus Nonito to Donaire, man. I'm not gonna lie. It, it went exactly how we thought it was gonna go. Like my boy Mon called it. He said, uh, when Donaire tweeted, I did not get an interview. He said that uh, his heart was bigger than Inouye's punches. We found out that wasn't true, man. We found out his heart wasn't as big as anyway punches, man. Either his heart wasn't big enough or his chin wasn't big enough. I'm let you guys decide that. Uh, but also, we found some conspiracy, might be a conspiracy, quote unquote. Uh, something was going on in, in Inouye's corner, man, that I'm gonna bring to y'all later in this video. Just stay tuned. We're gonna show you the conspiracy that we saw in Inouye's corner and get your take on that. But first, let me get my take, my boy Mon take on the fight. What you think about the fight, man? Um, like I said, Inouye is the monster, man. He's a pound for pound fighter. In my pound for pound list, I have him, you know, around five, six in that range. I think uh, he's a great fighter, man. I think the thing that he lacks is he's in a small division. I think the competition level is not as high as it is in, the, you know, the 130, 135 pound divisions. So it's hard to try to figure out how good he really is. You know, I, I know he's a good fighter, but I don't know if he's great. And I know a lot of people might uh, get upset about that, but it's sad when Donaire who's 39 years old, is holding a belt. And he's one of the best opponents you can fight when you know he's way past his pine when uh, Rigo beat the shit out of him in 2013. This is 2022. That was nine years ago when Rigo beat the shit out of him. So we know Donaire is not where he used to be. Now, in my opinion, the, the Donaire from 2012, 11, 13, I would have been able to see where Inouye was. And I would have favored Donaire in that fight over Inouye today. Because to me, Inouye, has a lot of holes in his defense. He's on offensively, he's unbelievable. He reminds me a lot of Chaka Tito as far as in the smaller division. He had the same kind of buzz, offensive, uh, great to watch, uh, fun, fun fan, uh, favorite fighter. But I'm not sure if he's elite until he's gonna have to uh, chase greatness and challenge himself and go up to 122. And he's probably gonna have to fight uh, Fulton to find out how great he really is because I don't think there's nobody down there at 118 who's going to give anyway any type of challenge. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm really interested in that Fulton fight. I, I see, I mean, I'm going to be honest, I already have Fulton beating him. I'm being honest. I think Fulton has too many, too many levels in this game, man. Too many different uh, chinks in this game. Anyway, I'm not going to lie. He, he impressed me this fight, man. He was very impressive. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, I seen a lot more defensive defensive responsibility in this fight than I did, even though it was just only a round and a half of a sample size. He was still very defensively responsible in this fight compared to that first fight when he fought him three years ago. Um, three years ago, Donaire broke his over the bone. He pretty much broke his nose and his over the bone. It was a back and forth trading war. I don't think I think his game plan was to avoid that trading war with Donaire, and I think Donaire's game plan was to be. You know, a lot more on his toes. He was on his toes in the first round, kind of beautifully at one point. But I don't know. I don't know why he started coming forward and started sitting down more. I don't know if he got hurt and, and he felt like he had to get back, or you know, he just got too confident that anyway wasn't hurting him, and then he wound up getting caught with that hook and got hurt. But either way, the first game play he had of being you know, on his feet, on his toes, and bouncing in and out, he was bouncing beautifully at first. He came out in the opening build the first round and threw a hook. That one on anyway, and it landed beautifully, landed flush. I said, okay, it could be pretty good for Donaire. Just coming off the first punch. Anyway, start taking his time, start seeing what Donaire wanted to do. And then, man, I'm gonna be honest, man, he, it was impressive. He kind of just broke him down systematically, man. He, he took away his hook, once he took away the hook, then he took away the right hand, and then he started finding his angles. Once he found that angle, he, ran, he landed a straight right hand and dropped Donaire on the first round. Donaire was still hurt in the second round, in my opinion. He tried to fight back. And uh, anyway, threw a beautiful hook, man, between the gloves. Don't they had his hands up, but it went between the gloves. It was like almost a slow reaction. Like you, you tell it caught him clean, and it was almost a slow reaction, but it, it buckled him like real, real bad. And it was over. It was all she wrote after that, man. It was all she wrote. He finished him, man. Um, I'm gonna be honest, man. He's he's like you said, he's on top pound for pound status right now. But he, what would you rate him as a finisher now? That he finished on there in that type of fashion. What would you rate him as? 
in closing out big fights like that? Um, he's elite when it comes to finishing fighters. I think he's in that same category with uh, Tate Davis and Terrence Crawford. When it comes to when you hurt, they, it's pretty much ball game. So I, I would put him in the same category with those fighters as far as being, they know how to finish. Like when you hurt, you're not gonna get away. If, it, if it's 30, 40 seconds left in the round, they gonna, they gonna pitch you away. So he's definitely elite when it comes to um, finishing off fighters. Most definitely. He got heavy, heavy hands, man. I don't know. But onto the conspiracy real quick. I don't keep them waiting with the conspiracy. You're going to see the clip on the bottom of this, on the bottom of my screen. It, it, he was wiping, his trainer was wiping his gloves with a rag. I never seen that in my in my years of watching boxing. I don't know if they was over there in Japan. So I'm assuming they got different rules and different sanction the bodies over there. They allowed them to do things like that. But I never seen, especially in the, after the first round, what could have been on his gloves that had him wiping his gloves off? Or what was he putting on his gloves? I'm asking you, have you ever seen somebody getting their gloves white between rounds before? No. No, I say, I, it was weird when you showed me the video this morning. I didn't catch it right away, but then you sent me the video and I thought about it. I went I, I went out on the job today and I was thinking about it in my head. What could be the reasoning for wiping the gloves off? And the only thing I can come up with, man, is that maybe, you know, in different countries, they got, you know, different ways and methods of training and, and, and different little things they do. And maybe they feel like they got to wipe the sweat or whatever off after each round. But it definitely looked kind of funny. I mean, I have, I have to say, i never seen it before. I don't know why he would do that. I don't know what they would have to do with the fight. Like, like, like he'll get done on his gloves 10 seconds to the next round. So if you're wiping off sweat, well, the first time you hit him in the, in the first and the second round, it's going to be sweat right back on the gloves. So I'm like, I don't understand the logic behind that. But it definitely was strange. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, you only went one round in the fight. Like, it wasn't like he was in the middle of the fight, you know, and maybe his gloves got touched the canvas or something, so now he got dirt on his gloves. You was out of the first round of the fight, and your gloves never touched anything but Donaire. So what exactly was you wiping off of your gloves? Uh, I don't think he was wiping anything on his gloves. I won't go that far and say that, because he did touch his nose right after the wipe. So I don't think he had wipe, uh, wipes on his gloves and then touch his own face. I won't go that far and say he was cheating, but I would just thought... I just thought it was weird, like you said. It's, it's kind of unexplainable. I would like somebody in the comments section to probably explain it to me. Maybe it's a, a Japanese religion thing or something. Maybe so it could be a cultural thing. I don't know. But to us here in America, it looks it looks weird, and it, it, it leads to asking a lot of questions. Like because we're so used to the corruption of boxing here in the states that we we try not to ostracize uh, ostracize anybody and try not to jump to any conclusions with anybody. But it leads to questions my opinion if anybody i haven't heard about seeing anybody else talk about it yet but maybe they haven't seen it maybe i just had that eye for it and i just caught it and i'm like what the fuck are you, they doing with his gloves right there it look, it look weird but uh what do you think doing that goes from here man um i think he need to go ahead and fight uh, uh paul the, uh, the britain fighter they go ahead and be undisputed at 118 no uh, don't my bad don't uh, anyway we get to anyway in a minute what do you yeah. think don't yeah. yeah yeah oh the nail needs to retire <laughs> I, he didn't did enough for the sport. I, that one and a half round, his reflex was a little too slow for me. And he's not as fast as he used to be. He can't take punches. like he, I know it's anyway, but I just saw a lot of things that I see from a lot of old fighters. The, the delayed reaction, you know, being a half a second late on, on his changes that he would have been way more fast on even three years ago when he fought uh, uh, anyway and put him on his butt, put anyway on his tail. So I just think that he don't got nothing else to prove. He one of the best little man boxers you know, to ever uh, lace up a pair of gloves. So I think, to me, to just go ahead and retire, nothing else for Donair to uh, prove at this point. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I'm a, I'm a huge Donair fan. I actually, I'm not going to lie, I actually was rooting for Donair against Rigo back when they fought in 2013. I thought Donair was the goods. This was, but this, I will admit, this was before I knew who Rigo really was at that point. I knew who Rigo, Rigo was. What I thought Donaire was going to catch him, because at that point Rigo was unimproving at that point. But that fight made me a Rigo fan, most definitely. But ever since then, it seemed like whenever Donaire got in a big fight, he always struggled. It seemed like after that the Rigo fight, every big fight after that he struggled in. Um, he he went down in weight for for anyway. He went down from the twenty twos and the twenty pounders to the to the teen pounders. So being older, dropping more weight being older again like i said really 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 older like you said it was 10 years ago nine years ago so yeah. he went from we uh, go. yeah so that was his that was the back that was pretty much the middle of his prime so that was 10 years ago come on now so that's 
it's time it's time for him to hang him up he can't be competitive at the championship level at this point in his career i think he should just hang it up man we don't want to see another we don't want to see him be another fighter to just get put out of the game in a very violent way this was violent enough we don't want to see him get put out any more violent than this uh well while you was going to early what you think anyway should do next what do you think anyway should do he need to go ahead and fight uh paul from britain go ahead and um become undisputed champion at 118. like i said so he can wrap that up and finish that division out and then after that man i think he need to go ahead and challenge himself and chase greatness um like we like we asked other fighters to do like we asked Charlo to do like we asked mayweather to do like canelo tried to do uh like uh wilder tried to do with tyson fury he needs to go up to 122 and chase greatness um like i said i got him at like number five and i know people say well he's a three division champion he's the champion at 112 115 118 you a hater no, I'm not. The the the, the, the uh, competition level down there compared to 130, 135, 147 is totally different. And and, and if you saying otherwise, then you just being bad yourself. Shut the fuck up. It's a it's a less we- a less amount of weight jumps too. It's only three pounds three pounds per like pounds. You got you got to understand. I give you a, a quick example. So people say, oh Charlo, uh, he need to go fight uh, David Benavidez. Okay, he, he ducking, he ducking. But Charlo started off at 154. He has to go to one six eight. That's fourteen pounds. Mm-hmm. Anyway, start off at one twelve. Fulton is at one twenty two. That's ten pounds. So I just want y'all to just think when you think about that, you ask the other guy to jump up two weight classes to fight, or why did the fighter guy that's forty pounds bigger than him? He had the same had the same energy for anyway. He's a great fighter. Like I said, I got him around five in my pound for pound. But until he go to one twenty two and he beats Fulton. I can't pit him like up there in the top two or three. I might even have him number one, honestly. If he beat Fulton and he just knocks Fulton out, I might even say he number one pound for pound after that. But I need to see him against a guy that I know is the good in Fulton before I can pit him at that next level of elites of the, you know, the Terrence Crawford some type. Yeah, he most definitely be top three if he knocks out Fulton, in my opinion. Especially, like you said, in spectacular fashion, because he, like you said, he do, he do have those divisions on his belt. And I'm not gonna lie, he'd be a big underdog against Fulton. I, I would believe on the better odds, he would be the big uh, underdog. So if he does go up and wait and not stop Fulton, yeah, you have to give him his credit, man. I will put him top three most definitely at that point. Um, I will say this, like I said earlier in the video, I think Fulton will bring a different level to him. I think Fulton has different wrinkles in his game that I don't think he ever seen before, in my opinion. I don't think anyway, and would see. I don't think he would. How can I say? I think he'd be well prepared for a, a Fulton fight, but I'm not gonna say the size would be too much for him. I just think the punch difference would be too much for him. I think Fulton have, has enough pop to hurt somebody coming up and wait. Will Fulton stay at 22 long enough for him to get there is the question. Because like you said, he want to unify first before before he go up. So will Fulton be there long enough? You know what I'm saying? Because I think he trying to unify himself. So mm-hmm. when he unify, will Fulton be the unify and then looking to move up? Uh, will he stay behind and wait for that big NUA fight? Because they'll be huge, man. I'm not going to lie. They can fight somewhere in the States, fight in Vegas. I don't see him going to Japan, maybe. It, I guess it all depends. Anyway, has the bigger name. Yeah. So I think he might wind up going to Japan or somewhere neutral. But yeah, it, it would be big because you have the 118-pound undisputed, undisputed champion against the 122-pound undisputed champion. If he can get the belt from the other two, they, they're in the same position. They got one more fight to be undisputed. So if he can get the belt... And at 122, when he get out of the belt at 118, you have the two undisputed champions fighting as, I guess, it'll be the king of the little men of boxing. Most definitely. That's why it'd be so huge. It might wind up being, I was saying, I think when he was talking, it might wind up being in Japan too. But I, in my opinion, that whole going across seas excuse, since Devin Haney went across seas and, and took those scraps, there should be no excuse for no more young fighters. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm Stephen Fulton, I'm going to Japan and get those straps. Um, uh, defend my straps at that point. I guess that and get that. If he knocks out anyway, he will have that casual crowd behind him. So then he can move up and wait and fight. You know the the Gary Russells of the world. You know what I'm saying? He fight the, the next division up and be the bigger A side. Because right now, if he go up and wait, who who will be the biggest fight for him if he move up and wait? Would it be Gary Russell? Yeah, it'd probably be Gary Russell. Unless you want to see uh, him in a Figueroa fight again. Um, him uh. Lil B-Hop is 130, right? 130? Is Lil B-Hop? Uh, yeah, I think 130, yep. Okay, so it, it, would, it would be um Figueroa and, or, or um, Russell. Yeah, so he might wait for that fight. He's not going to make that anyway money nowhere else, in my opinion. So, Japan. all right, maybe anything else we have? Go ahead. 
I'm just saying, if he fights in Japan, he get him a nice check, so he might want to consider that. Most definitely, most definitely. But with that being said, man, you got anything you want to add to this video? I think we covered it all. All right, with that being said, man, this is, of course, your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chan Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. Say peace to him, man. All right, everybody, remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, comment. Let's keep this channel going. You know why? Because we love boxing and you love boxing. But most of all, God, peace and love, and we out of here. Take care. Hold or try to get out of the way. He's going to fight fire with fire, and that is a bad idea when you're facing the monster in a way because this is what is going to happen. And